My name is Leora Goodman, mm. and this is my mom. <laughs> and I think, Mom, when you did your research, you told me, and I saw in your book, Shalom Uganda, that there were also a, a couple from East India, a Jewish couple, is that right? Yes, that's right. They came from Cochin, and so they were always included in whatever ceremonies they, that we had. Uh, and in my book, Shalom Uganda, the Jewish community on the equator, there's actually a photograph of them uh, in my parents' house with a few other people. My name is Janice Mazur and I'm Jewish and I used to live in Uganda from 1949 until 1961. My parents came to Uganda after they met in Haifa, which at that time was Palestine. I was born in Asmara, Eritrea. And we came to Uganda when I was five years old. The Jewish community at that time was very small. There were some Holocaust people, Jews who had come. There was one or two Jews who had been in culture camp because they were Polish and had come with the British. And the British had looked after them and put them into what we called a refugee camp on the shores of Lake Victoria. And then there were others like my father who didn't have enough money to pay the head tax to stay in Kenya. And so he had to come to Uganda. We were about 23 families, give or take, maybe 63 to 67 individuals. We had about 17 Jewish children born during that period. We had um, four weddings, uh, none of them with a rabbi and each time it was a Jewish man marrying a non-Jewish woman, with the exception of one. We had very little support from the point of view that we had no rabbi, no synagogue, and no Torah. Nairobi in Kenya was the mother load, so we looked to Nairobi for sending us matzahs in the early days, maybe just 14 or 16 packets of matzah, whereas in Nairobi they had many more. A few newsletters, whereas monthly newsletters, whereas in Nairobi they had more. They had a rabbi in Nairobi. They had the ability to kosher meat from Jewish farms in the Nakuru Nairobi area. We had nothing like that. But we were very uh, tight group, very uh, closely knit. If a child came to the school, the teacher would say, here is a Jewish child, and I would say to my parents, a new Jewish family has come, and that is how we got to know who was Jewish and who wasn't. On one occasion, uh, my father saw a man walking down the main street in Kampala, and he stopped, and he said, I think you might be Jewish, and the man said, how did you guess? So it's, it was a, an unusual thing for a Jew to be in Kampala. Many of the uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur services were held in my parents' house. Also when Judge, um, Chief Judge Joseph Herbstein from South Africa came to Kampala fundraising for the Jewish appeal, that event was held in my parents' house. There was a Jewish governor general uh, who was called Sir Andrew Cohen, who came from a, an aristocratic Jewish family in London. And he was the first governor in Uganda who did not take from Uganda, but tried to give to Uganda and actually initiated the beginnings of independence. And for that, he had to um, ask the Kabaka to leave. Uh, Sir Andrew Cohen was also very instrumental in getting Macquarie College 
going in the way that it is today. And he was very, very um, adamant about education for all African people in Uganda. In later years, we had uh, events at the hotel, and I later learned that it was uh, was owned by Dak, who is also the person who built luxury apartments on top of the Jewish cemetery. The Jewish cemetery is no more. My uncle is buried there. The grandmother of a friend of mine who now lives in Cape Town is buried there. Uh, there is another burial from a man who was an East Indian and was uh, brought to Uganda for work. And he married a Polish woman from Koja. And he is buried there too. So very few, very few, I don't know all of the people who died and were buried there, but I wanted to commemorate my Jewish community. Last century, the Abadiah were not known. Only by the, an inner circle of three or four men in my community who came here, provided money and education and some books. But when I was doing my research and I said, and what do you know about the Abadiah? What's Abadiah? They had no idea. So now, in this century, as you can see, the Abadiah are flourishing beautifully, as are the, um, they are conservative, as you may know. There are also is it two or three uh, orthodox groups in the same area in Puti. And who knows about my Jewish community? Even the Chabad rabbi in Kampala today had no idea of the cemetery and had no idea that there had been a Jewish community here. The same with um, Arye Oded, who was um, an Adonite Jew, who was actually a diplomat for Uganda. He came, I think, in 1962, and he made contact with the Abadiah, and he thought he was the first person to make contact with the Abadiah. In actual fact, it had been a man called Victor Franco, who was from Egypt and a Sephardic Jew, um, Phil Leverton, who is the son of Moshe Leverton, who I believe in 1921 or thereabouts was instrumental in helping the Abadiah learn about Judaism. Uh, you were born in Asmara. Yes. That is Eritrea. Yes. You came to Uganda which year? 1949. 1949. So, did you know about the African Jews by then, or you just knew about the families where you were living? No, when I did my research, mm. and I asked Dr. Luda, who had come to Uganda mm. with his wife and one child, another child was born here, mm. um, and he did a lot of work with um, African children up country, what we called it then, um, and when I said to him, what do you know about the Abadai? He said, what Abadai? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I asked another woman called um, Valora Moskovich, who was very active in the Jewish community, the white European <laughs> Jewish community, mm -hmm. and she said she had never heard of the Abadiah. It, it wasn't the thing to do to have black Jews at that time. I don't mean to sound unpolitical or discriminatory, but it was not. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that um, JJ went to Nairobi to mm -hmm. ask for help and was shunned because he was black. You've met JJ Keki? I didn't meet him, I just read about I just read about him. There are some parts of the literature that talk about no Jews in Uganda and in fact the um, Commonwealth Jewish Commonwealth, it's an organization, I can't think of the correct name right now, but I have a document that was written in 1987, a copy in my book, saying there is no Jewish community in Uganda. That I wish excludes you can... even mm. the Abadiah then. So I tried to refute that mm. in my book and say, yes, there are. Now they are flourishing. My, my, my community is not available anymore, it's banished into the diaspora, Jewish diaspora, but the appetite of flourishing. Thank you very much.